everybody, welcome back to Crookshank Fine Art, and it's only fine because you're here. Okay, this week's video, um, we're going to be drawing Scooby-Doo, and despite what you might think, it's not rough at all. Um, just like last week's video, we're going to start with the outline, go in with a darker value, and then move into some fun colors, and we actually had a background in today's video. Super, super fun, just like last week, fun, easy. Um, without further ado, I'll see you in the paper. Hey everybody, okay, so I'm gonna start commentating, um, right about now. <laughs> okay, so we went in and outlined Scooby-Doo. Um, this time, to start the outline, I did not use black, I used a, kind of a dark purple. Um, much like I always say, especially when you're using colored pencil, which we are in this video, it can be layered so well. So it doesn't really matter what color I started the outline with, as long as it, it was, you know, dark. Okay, so now that we got the outline done, um, I started um, just randomly. I picked anywhere. I'm working on a small sheet of paper, so it doesn't really matter where I start. Um, and then I just went in with a light brown. Um, um, I When you're looking at the reference photo... Um, you know, you're going to want to choose an accurate representation of the color you see, unless you're not going for that. Um, again, I, I'll always tell you, don't let me tell you what to do unless you're asking me um, how to do something. Then I'll do my best to show you. But I just went in there with a light brown and basically covered his uh, whole body with uh, that uh, traditional Scooby color. And uh, in this video, I've added the reference photos, so um, if you want to get exactly like the photo I used, go ahead and find that brown and use it. So we're coming near the um, finishing shading Scooby with that general brown. And then in this video, a little bit later on, I'm going to add a background as well. I, if you can see in the background there, I add a little moon. I'm just going to add like a night scene just to spice it up a bit. Okay, so now, um, like I mentioned earlier, I knew that the outline was going to be dark, so I'm finally going in with a, an actual black colored Prismacolor pencil and just really sharpening this image because it, when I went over it with the brown pencil, the hard edges kind of got lost in this car cartoon drawing. It's almost essential to have these nice, crisp, um, hard, dark lines, and I'm always using... Um, a sharp pencil, as I always say, that's going to get redundant, I'm sorry, but it has to be sharp, it really does. Um, so for the darker spots on Scooby, like his eyebrows, eyes, and spots, I went in with that same purple that I outlined with, and I'm going back in with the black. Maybe, you probably can't tell on the video, but if you saw it in person, it's you can tell it's really layered and adds more visual interest. See how it's kind of popping out now? Uh, and this was the first video I used. I, I didn't tape it down. I really wanted uh, more freedom to just to get that better shading. And uh, now we're tackling the blue collar. I just t picked a light blue and a dark blue, similar to that canon of blue. And uh, I just went in with the light one and then layered over with the dark to make more visual interest. Now that Scooby's... Uh, body is almost done. I'm going in with a, sh a slightly darker brown just to add more depth. I know it's a cartoon, but um, you can make even a cartoon drawing spicy, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just adding just another layer of brown just to 
just to really make it pop. And I think you guys can agree it's a little more interesting now. And just kind of finishing up towards his face with that darker brown. And then I come back and um, for the uh, light or white parts of the body, I added a very, very light blue like in his eyes and his teeth. And then now we're going to start on the sky. So I wanted a kind of nighttime moon scene to make Scooby pop. So I'm just starting with the light blue towards the horizon. Um, if you're drawing skies, always draw them darker up top, even if it's a, a midday, it's afternoon, 1 p.m. You're always going to want to have a slightly darker blue at the top and light blue at the bottom. If it's a night scene, dark, dark at the top and, and then lighter at the bottom, even though it's dark. Um, so hopefully you can um, see how that's processed through uh, what you see my hands doing. And then you will leave the moon to the very last section. I'm using indigo blue. It's one of my favorite blues, especially for nighttime scenes. It's just, it's like a royal or navy blue that Prismacolor has. It's called um, indigo blue. So just doing my best to keep an even tone throughout the sky, shading in uh, ovoids or uh, elongated circles to hide my pencil strokes. And just dancing around the moon there. Finishing this one up. There we go. Get that in there. Again, always, I may have a look like some awkward points where I just leave there, but it's just to sharpen my pencil. Practicing what I preach. See how this is coming together now? At the start, you might go, hmm, I, I really don't know why he's making that decision or that. But now, as the drawing comes to uh, near near its full completion, um, I think you guys can see that, um, you know, I think you and I, we did it together. We did it. And uh, now we're just adding the moon. This one, you just have fun with this. Make whatever moon you want, as long as it's circular or that typical half moon shape. This was super fun, guys. I had uh, such a blast drawing this for you. I hope you um, maybe got some use out of this, learned something, or just had fun watching. I need to sign my name there at the bottom. I don't always do, but this one I did. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one. It's gonna be all